Praise God, praise God. Ha, you doing? Glory, glory, glory. Give him glory. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. God keep you. I don't care how you got up this morning. You got up. Come on, somebody. Sometimes tired, sometimes weary, sometimes teary. But let me tell you something. You got up. You had that breath. Some people took their last breath. Where God, let me tell you something. And, and I'm going in. I ain't even got time for everything else. The power of God hit me early. I was up early this morning. Although I had a lot of things I was doing yesterday, and that's what I love about the glory of God, the power of God, the fire of God. I'm talking about your physical body may be tired, but something about when your spirit is engulfed by the presence and the power of God. So I'm saying, be mindful. God woke you up this morning. Be mindful that he got you in your right mind. Be mindful. You woke up in a home. Some people are homeless. Be mindful. You woke up with something to eat somebody, if, unless you fast and come on somebody. Hallelujah. Well, you get the point. Be thankful. Be mindful. You know, um, uh, God is a God full of grace and mercy. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. God just wants us to be thankful. So if you notice my title, it says, be ye not conformed to this world, says the Lord. You know, the more that I actually follow God, the more that I hear his uh, his voice, his being his presence, understand his word, read his word, meditate on his word, praying. I realize why the earlier church were actually more powerful. They kept their mind stayed on Christ. And that's how the enemy is getting everybody. He got everybody. Oh, oh, he did a good number. He did a good number. I'm going to break this thing down slowly but surely. Let me tell you something. He has everybody conforming to this world. So, People don't think like Christ. See, he's trying to separate you from Christ. That's his job. And if you notice, there's two jobs, just like there's two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. The kingdom of God, he doesn't force you or anything. It's free will. Come, come, all that are heavy, laden, burden. Come on, somebody. Easy is my yoke, said the Lord. But the enemy, he knows he can't talk that because he knows it ain't nothing but a lie because he's the father of lies. So what he have done is he is the God of this world, the little G. So he has made this world beautiful. That's why people like Hollywood. And I'm going in this morning. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Everybody want to be a star. Everybody want to be famous. Everybody want attention. Don't lie. Let's just call it like it is. That's why. You know what? I don't know if y'all noticed. I stopped taking selfies. I'll let somebody take a picture of me, but I stopped. I'm taking selfies and, I, and I'm going to explain it in a minute. I understand what the enemy is doing. He's trying to get so many people with self pride. Come on, somebody with self acknowledgement, with branding self, with doing this with self. You get what I'm saying? Self glorification. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. To where even the Christians now, and you allow on God, I'm sorry, I'm going in. You allow on God and say, God bless me. Let me tell you something. God ain't going to never bless you so you can be more famous than Jesus. The devil is a lie, and I'm sick of it, and that's not God. And I don't care what nobody say. I'm going with what God said because that's what we got to go back to. The oracles of God. There was never supposed to be anybody famous in the kingdom of God but Jesus the Christ. The one who paid the price. The one who redeemed us. As a matter of fact, let's go all the way here this morning. If we are serving the kingdom of God, that means it's his kingdom. Come on, somebody. Everybody trying to build their own kingdoms. Yes, y'all know it's true. Everybody's trying to, you know, make themselves bigger than what they are. That's why people brand themselves. That's why they're on Facebook doing this and that. Now, if you have a mandate, the difference is this, you're glorifying God. If you don't have a mandate from God, you're glorifying yourself. And I don't care what nobody say. That goes from gospel artists to top preachers. That was never the, the, the mandate of God for his people. The mandate of God for his people said, I want you to bring the kingdom of God on earth, meaning that I want you to introduce everybody to my son, Jesus Christ, because guess what? That's the only way they can be saved. So if you are glorifying yourself, then you are a liar before God, because he says, glorify my kingdom. Come on, somebody. That's why everybody got it mixed up. Let me tell you something. There is no way that this world is supposed to be in the shape it's in, that they're in the shape they're in because the Christians are not doing what they're supposed to do. We're so 
so busy worrying and I put we up in there because God looks at us as the children of Israel. We're so busy trying to be famous, trying to be all that, trying to be like the world until instead of us conforming the world, they are conforming the church. That's what has happened. You could say what you want. It started with the business suits. God never told you to preach in no business suit. I'm going to say that to the day I die and I don't care what nobody say. You out of order. I said you out of order and you wonder why everybody's saying, ooh, the pastor fine. Oh, ooh, the preacher fine. Oh, ooh, this one fine. When they had on them robes, you couldn't see if they was fine all the way. As a matter of fact, the robe, oh, I'm going in this morning. I feel the power of God. You know, the robe told you that's a man of God, that's a woman of God. Let me tell you why God wants the robe back. And he told me this. He said, because my presence set on the robe, because that's what I ordained my preachers to wear. That's what I ordained my priests to wear, the Levitical priesthood from the beginning. So if God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore, God didn't change it. But we have people coming to the church. Well, you know, we got to do new things. Let me tell you something what has happened to us doing them new things. Now we got strange fire in the church. Now we got strange preachers in the church. Now we got strange teachers in the church. Now we got pimps in the church. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning and yes I'm on one and and I'm gonna be honest with you the true children of God they want to call somebody crazy let's let's go there they want to call us outrageous oh you ain't seen nothing yet because I'm gonna tell you the truth God said we came in power and we going in power let me tell you something I talk about the early church but you have to understand that we are the last generation and honey God said we're coming in more power oh I feel this thing let me tell you something the day will rise limbs will be but here's the deal God is cleansing his church he said because that's my church and that's my people and it's my power hallelujah i feel it up in here and, and i can't wait i can't wait i don't care if it's me clean us up god purify us up god correct us god rebuke us god and i'm gonna be real with you and take who you gotta take out of the way yeah i said it it's a hard word but it's a true word see y'all ain't ready for the real prophets because the real prophets have the mind of god we don't have our own mind we're not that great come on somebody yeah i said it and if we don't start praying like that again we ain't gonna see a change but let me tell you something that's why god is raising up some bold preachers some bold teachers some bold prophets they don't care about your money honey they don't care about what you driving they don't care how slick your tongue is they they want to know do they hear God do they hear the spirit of God do they hear the power of God do they feel the presence of God you ain't gonna be able to perpetrate no more that's what I'm really saying the spirit of truth has come on this earth so much until even a baby know when you lying oh come on somebody why you think they're making all them means with them babies the babies looking at people like they're crazy like I can't talk and I know you lying oh come on somebody hallelujah I feel one this morning I know you don't like it, some of you. So anyway, let me give you some scripture. Oh, yes, I'm on one. God then came in. I mean, he woke me up early. I, I, I get, And it's funny because I guess he said, well, you, you worked business yesterday. Say it's time for ministry today. Y'all ain't ready for me. So anyway, Romans 12 and 2. I'm coming from Romans 12 and 2. And it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm going to read that again and I'm going to go a little slower and be not conformed to this world. Oh, come on somebody. There it is right there. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know why people that lost I renewed my let me tell you something I did not get to here on my own I cannot lie I was worldly and I did everything else and if truth be told if you tell the truth you were worldly too before we got saved you know how we got saved because we wanted to change we got tired and sick and tired of doing the things we were doing we got sick and tired of being who we was most somebody I'm talking up in here this morning and so now we had to renew our mind you just don't get here we had to read that bible we had to pray God help me God let me see me God change me God help me before you can help anybody else you have to renew your mind we have a church that's coming in and these new preachers yeah I'm saying it you you want to I don't care if you have a doctorate or whatever let me tell you something unless your mind is renewed you're going to do the same thing you did as before the only thing is now you're putting Christ on it yeah I said it you got to renew your mind you got to get in that bible and yes it's gonna take some work we got a lazy church a lazy church i'm sorry you're just lazy you don't want to do nothing but boy let it be a fight on facebook let it be somebody going off on facebook let it be somebody doing a live that they probably shouldn't be doing y'all all in two to the world stuff but you won't sit down and read your bible you won't take time and pray for people you won't take time and pray for yourself you won't take time and fast yeah i said it because that's what's going on let, let me continue 
continue. He says, also that you may prove what is good, what is good. That means this word going to keep you in order. That means the presence of God going to keep you in order. That's why they call it the conviction of the Holy Ghost. I say it all the time. If you ain't got no conviction, you ain't saved. You are lying before God. You might as well just stop. We got too many people that's not renewed. That's what you're seeing. That's why they're walking out of order. If you are not renewed, you can't do right by God. Some Come on. It says it right here. And he said, an acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise God. This was the reading of the word of God. Let me tell you something. And people don't understand what's happening. That's why our children is out of order because the church is out of order. You got everybody and I'm going here and I've said this before, but I'm going to go with the Holy Ghost. You got grown women and it hurts my heart when I see the older women, they show them more flesh than the younger women trying to compete. Come on, somebody, grandma, you know what time it is. You know, you got to cover that up. Ain't nobody want to see that. You don't want to see it half the time, but you're trying to compete with the younger ladies. Women, we got to, we got to understand something. You know, when you were young, you did young and foolish things. But when you get mature, you got to come on now. We got more grandmas looking younger. And I'm not saying you got to dress all old and everything. But I am saying where's the modesty? What is the respect? And then we wonder why. You, instead, I'm telling you, I see it and I'm seeing it more and more. And it's really like vexing me. I'm seeing even even the men. I was at a, um, at the function yesterday, right? And I see more men trying to dress like young men. Are you serious? You wonder why these young men are not men? Because y'all not acting like men. Y'all not putting on y'all suits the way y'all used to. And, and I'm sick of tired of all the flip-flops. Dude, wear some shoes. Have some have some honor about yourself. Women, have some honor about yourself. Quit having a rollers on. And, and, and I don't know why I'm going here, but I'm going here. All in public. Y'all don't see what's happening? And it doesn't matter. Black, white, it don't. Even, it's not even a box ethnicity it's about respect but y'all don't have no respect for yourself half of you don't even well brought out in public and in church yeah i said it you know doggone well that's not of god men you wear tight pants then you got the little black tight shoes on i don't know what they look like i ain't never saw no shoes like that i'm like what is going on i'm gonna tell you what's going on sodom and gomorrah to the tent power everybody done lost their mind sex craze lust craze money craze and then when somebody come and talk about god oh that's just too much religion oh that's just too much honey let me tell you something it's not enough to stop people from going to hell the way they going they going to hell god says oh no you don't understand you couldn't take what god showed me half of y'all want to be a prophet you don't know what a true prophet Prophet go through because the true prophet carry the burdens. I couldn't understand. I have an old Bible. I ain't got no new Bibles. Okay, this Bible falling apart. But I, hey, I'm gonna take it to my grave. Y'all ain't ready for me because I noticed. And, and when I became a prophet, I noticed each prophet book when it first started it said the burden of the Lord. And I kept asking myself. I said, God, what, what is that? So one day I asked God, I said, God, what do you mean the burden of the Lord? He said, oh, good question. And this is what God told me. He said, Deanna, being a prophet, you feel the burden before everybody else because I'm going to tell you what they're doing. And, say, and, see, and he said, now this the bad part. They're going to hit you for me thinking, who does she think she is? Y'all ain't ready for me. That's why they call it the mouthpiece of God. He said, but that's all right. Stand strong because I'm going to quicken you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to strengthen you. Why you think I ain't scared of none of y'all? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't care if they kill me. I I ain't scared of none of you. He says, be, be fearful of the one that killed the spirit and the body. So you can kill this body any day, any time. Bring it on. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'm on one. You got to you got to be full of the Holy Ghost to do this. That's what I'm saying. I didn't say perfect. I say full of the Holy Ghost. And the only way you can be full of the Holy Ghost is you got to spend time with God. You got to I'm talking about you got to let God get all in your spirit, your soul, your mind. The same way you do that music, the same way you do that man, the same way you do that woman. You get the drift. Come on somebody, hallelujah. We do everything else to the hundred degree, but when it comes to the things of God, we give God lackadaisy. I call it the Cain spirit. Cain still trying to kill Abel because Cain want to do what Cain do. Oh, come on somebody. And Abel did what God asked him. That's the difference between the true children of God. And that's the difference between the disobedient children of God. Because guess what? There is two kinds. I don't care what you say. We want to do stuff halfway, but wait a minute. You get on that job. I bet you you're doing it hundred percent for that money. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. But for the things of God, we take it mediocre. And this is what happened because with the standards, we stop having the standard. We stop telling people, Hey, don't come to church. Dress. Well, the script, and then they love to use scripture. Don't you know the devil? That's his greatest trick. 
He says, well, God says, come as you are. You know what he meant? Come with your ugly self, with your sinful self, with your lying self, whatever sin you have. That's what he meant. People, I, what, I, what I understood after I read this Bible over and over, and I've read it two or three times over from front to cover, is that I realize people don't know scripture and understand what I'm saying. They don't even know it. They don't know biblical applications, meaning that they don't know what it means. And I'm not kidding. Just like they say, women are supposed to preach, but yet you got Deborah, you got Prophet Isaiah, you got all. Esther, you got all these strong women that God used, but pe women are not supposed to preach. Y'all ain't ready for me. Paul was talking to a certain sector. Come on, somebody, how do you? And you can't tell nobody nothing because everybody know everything. I can even be taught, and I I consider myself can be a Bible scholar, but I can still be taught. But some people don't want to be taught, so you have to rightly divide the Word of God. When He says "come as you are," it means just come. It don't mean come half naked. It hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So if He a holy God, will He really ask you to come into his sanctuary, his temple, his church with your breasts out, your thighs out, your everything out. And some of you are doing that, you know, doggone well what you're doing. And then we wonder why the men of God are falling. Oh, let me go here. Now we wonder why the women of God are falling because not some of y'all acting like y'all lesbians. Yeah, I said it. Hallelujah. I remember I was going to a church and this woman, every time she would come try to kiss me on my neck. I saw her doing other women like that and nobody said nothing. But me, I'm kind of crazy. I'm going to say something. So I, the first time she did it, I said, hey, hey, hey. She, she was like, ha, 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 ha. I said, see when she did it again, I, I, I wasn't saved, right? Like I was, right? I almost knocked out in the foyer. I know I'm crazy, but I'm telling y'all the truth. My mentor caught me. She said, Daniel, you can't do that. I said, well, she better not be playing me like that. I said, I don't play that stuff. I, 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 you don't get what I'm trying to say. We got to come back to the oracles of God. It's too much worldliness in the church. Y'all wearing shades. Y'all having y'all phones. Y'all know doggone well that's not the presence of God. In the presence of God, you're supposed to honor him. In the presence of God, there's holy in the presence of God that's God who are you talking about you wouldn't even be up this morning if he didn't blow on you let me tell you how it goes do you know when you're sleeping that you are in a state of comatose oh yeah which is near death that means if an uh, uh, angel you have an angel that is standing by you and if God don't summon that angel to touch you you will not awaken that's the power of God and yes some of y'all take it lightly but yet but like I said the other day let something happen y'all be the first one crying to God y'all be the first one blaming God y'all be the first one saying oh God as a matter of fact even the evil people do that because they know at the end of that thing I don't care what the devil do I don't care what these wicked people do the power always ends with God it begins with God and it ends with God what am I saying I'm saying, get it together. Know who God is. And, and, and I teach this on purpose because he put it in my spirit. Yes, God is a God of love. But I'm going to tell you, so many people are lying on God and taking advantage of that. Well, you know, God is a God of love and God is a God of mercy and God is a God of grace and not people going to hell. Yes, that is true. But he's also a God that wrote 10 commandments or allowed Moses to. He's also a God that have laws and statutes. He's also the God that have other commandments like love one another. He also the God that says, don't come to me and flesh should not glory before me. He's also a God that say that should not kill. That should not steal. That should not bear false witness. And yet we doing it all. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. As if he is not God. And I'm telling you what God says that the wrath is coming. You could say what you want to say. Let me tell you something, how I've learned and what God have showed me sooner or later. And you know, it's true. Oh, come on somebody walk with me this morning. Have you ever seen somebody that keep doing something? And y'all just know it's a matter of time before they get caught. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be crime. It could be in the natural. It could be adulterous. It could be lying. It could be stealing. Sooner or later, because ain't nobody that good, because God is better. Oh, come on, somebody. Sooner or later, you know they're going to get caught, right? Okay, sooner or later, you know you're going to get caught, right? Sooner or later, you know God going to get tired. And, and then when he get tired, everybody want to cry. Because when he get tired, you know what he do? God don't do bad things. Let me clarify that, because a lot of people think God, no, he allowed the devil to touch you. He said, go ahead, but touch not their life. And then sometimes truth be told, y'all ain't going to be ready for this one. Don't get mad at me. Y'all wonder why these young kids die? Cause God has given them permission to touch their life. This ain't no game. He's not playing. He's not playing. And then y'all want to put some little wings on them. Like they're going to heaven. They didn't live like hell, treated people like hell. And y'all talking about they going to heaven. And I know it's a hard word, but it's a real word. Come on, somebody. I, I, I've watched young people get buried. I had to go to funerals. The, the boy looked like he was a doll up in there because he was stealing and the guy shot him point blank. I've seen stuff that make your head. I'm talking about just ask God why. You know why. 
Let me tell you something. The Bible is real. We may not like it. It may not feel good. And you can, you can live in that fantasy world all day long because to be honest with you, I see what the enemy is doing. He got everybody wanting to have fun, 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 and fantasy, fantasy. And then when reality hit, nobody can't take nothing. I, I try to live in a balance. Yes, God wants us to have to smile, to laugh, because laughter is like good medicine. But also, reality is real. You can't be drinking it away. You can't be sexing it away. You can't be playing um what bingo away because y'all love to play bingo. Y'all love to gamble. Y'all love to y'all chase money more than y'all chase God. Come on, somebody. You don't think God knows what you have need for? Yeah, I'm going here this morning. I just feel the power of God because God is saying that people, this is the great falling away. People are leaving God. They don't want God no more. They want Nicki Minaj. Yeah, I say it like that. They, they, they want they want the, the world. As a matter of fact, you got your Christian artists wanting the world. And then y'all get mad when somebody say something. Let me tell you something. I don't miss nothing. Not that I'm that great. I, it's like, if I do miss, y'all don't understand. God will wake me up 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you saw what you saw. Oh, no, you didn't see what you see. But most of the time, I'm all, I'm all right. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Meaning that I'm seeing these gospel artists. I'm seeing these preachers. And I'm not saying everybody, but 5% is real, y'all. The rest of them, they fake. And let me tell you why. The power of God is real, right? Everybody knows that. And if you have not experienced it, at least you've seen it. Hopefully you have. Let me tell you something. When you are truly in the presence of God, there's a change. A change that come on somebody that you can't you can't stop crying in the presence of God. You can't stop talking in the presence of God. You can't stop. I mean, the presence of God will, will, will arrest you. And we don't see that no more because it's performance. It's entertainment. And to be honest with you, when you have an entertainment spirit, you get mad when a real word comes. Why y'all think I don't have a whole lot of followers? Why y'all think I'm not on TV? And come on, somebody. And I ain't hating. I used to get upset. I, oh, I'm very transparent. I used to be like, God, what's going on? Then when I figured the system. Them out, I say, I'm cool. I, I'm I'm great. Whatever I'm supposed to do, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God, for saving me. Oh, come on, somebody. You got to be humble. You got to understand that God could have took you in your mess, but instead he saved you for a message. And yet we have a, a situation in the church that everybody want to be famous. Everybody want to be a crook. Y'all doing more stuff for money than for God, as if the money going to matter in a little bit. Oh, come on, somebody. How to do your revelation is real. A lot of people don't like revelation because it's coming to pass. And, and y'all think this so if they don't talk about it if I don't hear it then it won't be y'all just as crazy as all I do I'm sorry I said it like it is because first of all he says my people perish for lack of knowledge you want to know what also the lack is I I, I just don't want to hear that right now I just don't want to know if I don't hear it, then I'm gonna be okay honey you ain't gonna be okay them people are here let me tell you something it's two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. Which one you with? Point blank in the story because most of you are straddling the fence. And I just want to know, how long? How long? How long you before God make you choose? How long before God allow something to happen? How long? Because I'm going to tell you right now. This stuff is real and it's getting realer. Y'all just don't see it right now. You see, because the enemy is a camouflager. Oh, let me tell you something. He a faker. He got everybody thinking it's okay, but you can feel it. Oh, come on, somebody. If you really real, you can feel it in the spirit. Something wrong, huh? Something wrong, huh? Something happen, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel it. The best thing I tell you is get close to God and quit playing. Quit playing with yourself. I'm not trying to put you in the fear because let me tell you something. That's exactly what the world doing. And I'm going here. So if you are a different nationality other than black, don't you get offended of what I'm getting ready to say because this ain't for you. Why you think they started killing black men? Why you think they're still killing black men? They're trying to put fear before they do martial law. They're trying to put fear before they take over. What you think they're doing? But I'm telling you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost, the ones that truly have the power of God, we're going to look them straight in the eye and say, do what you do. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. That's what's going on. You got these people that's in fear. Even the pastors, they won't preach and teach it because they scared. They scared. They're trying to protect themselves and their family. Not understanding. You think them people going to care when they do what they do? They taking out everybody. They've been planning this since the beginning of the world. The, and I know y'all don't believe. All of y'all don't believe. But the ones that do, listen to me. Cain, it was Cain descendant that started the Illuminati. Do you understand how much they hate God? It was Cain descendant. And isn't that funny? Cain, isn't that? That's crazy, right? Now, Cain was dead when he did that. But that spirit, that spirit of disobedience, I'm going to get God. I'm going to hate God. They still hate 
God, people. This ain't a game. The only people playing is the children of God. And they laughing at us. They laughing at us. Because y'all thinking having power is having a big church. Y'all thinking having power is having a million followers. Y'all thinking power is doing this and this. No. You know what power is? When you can pray and somebody's healed. When you can speak and somebody's delivered. When you can speak and somebody, it, 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 they feel the power of God and, and God can heal them. God can deliver them. God can change them. God can keep them strong. God can keep them from committing suicide. Come on, somebody. We've got too many people committing suicide these days. Y'all don't understand what's happening? Y'all so busy walking in the natural. The only thing can happen is in the spirit. That's why God says, he says, those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Ain't nobody carrying this spirit too much so y'all don't know the truth. And when somebody come with truth, I don't know. That sounds strange. Honey, what should sound strange is that strange doctrine. The witches and warlock is preaching. Because most of the preachers are witches and warlocks. I don't care if you don't believe it. I want you to look at what they, you know, well, thank you, Lord. I hear you. The fruit, the fruit will always let you know what a person is bearing and what they carrying. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You don't hear me bearing and caring because either you're going to be bearing or you're going to carry fruit and your fruit going to remain. When you truly have the power of God, the presence of God, the fire of God, that church is united. I'm talking about ignited too with the fire of God. You can feel it because let me tell you something. Anybody can preach a good word, but don't, I don't want you to just preach a good word. I, I, I need it at two, three o'clock in the morning when the devil trying to mess with my mind. I need it with my family going through something. I need it with my daughter going through something. I need it with my everything. I need this word to be real. And I need the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't, don't, don't play with me. Don't play with my spirit. Don't entertain me. This is my life. And some of y'all let people play with your life. Hallelujah, you didn't do that in the world. How are you going to do that in the kingdom of God? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm preaching up in here, but I want to read something to you because this is what bears it all. And I pray that you understand how powerful that this is. Ephesians 6, it says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Are you serious? It says it right there. All right. Verse 11, Ephesians 6. I'm in chapter um, 6. Ephesians, I'm sorry, chapter 6. I'm starting at verse 10. Now I'm on 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's it right there. Most people don't do it. You want to play a little, live a little, give a little. You know what I'm saying. Hooking and crooking. All right. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But hold on. We got a whole church that don't believe in demons. I, I, I just don't want to talk about that stuff. Well, okay, whatever, whatever. Let me read that again. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, hold on, of the darkness of this world, against